In this video, we will demonstrate the Quick Peaks gadget in Origin 2015, including tagging peaks in single plots, grouped plots, and multilayer graphs, creating and reusing a gadget theme, improving the generated baseline, hiding the ROI box and controls, and other advanced gadget features. Let's start by using the submission spectrum to illustrate simple peak tagging. To open the gadget, go to the Gadgets menu, Quick Peaks, Open Dialog. Let's click the OK button to accept the default settings. Let's extend the ROI box to cover all of the peaks. In Origin 2015, you can double click on the ROI box to open the Preferences dialog again. From the Baseline tab, we'll change our mode from Second Derivative to Constant, the Range to Full Plot Range, and we'll set the Constant to be Minimum. When we click the Apply button, the small peak in the lower right of the ROI box will no longer be tagged. But we can correct for this. We'll go to the Find Peak tab, set our direction to positive, our local points to 3, and our threshold height percent to 10%. Now when we click on the Apply button, the peak will be tagged again. Now we'll go to the Output tab and make sure our results are appended to a worksheet. Now we'll go to the Quantities tab and make sure our data set identifier is set to Book, Sheet, Long Name. We can click OK to close the dialog. We're not interested in the series of peaks below about 410 nanometers, so let's adjust the ROI box to exclude them. Now we can output our results. Go to the Gadget Flyout menu and select New Output. Before we close the gadget, let's save these settings as a theme for future use. Now we can close the gadget. If we go to the Project Explorer, we can see a workbook has been created by the gadget. This workbook contains a worksheet holding all the data related to each of the peaks that the gadget has found. Let's close this workbook and close this graph. Now let's look at using the Quick Peaks gadget with a grouped plot. Let's open the gadget again from the Gadgets menu. We'll load the theme we just created into the gadget and click the OK button. We can see in the ROI box that the gadget is focused on the first plot in the group. However, we can change the selected plot by going to the Gadget Flyout menu, Change Data, and we'll change the plot. We can easily generate output for all curves in the grouped plot by going to the Flyout menu and selecting New Output for all curves. Let's close our gadget. In the graph, we can see that our peak labels are either partially obscured or overlapping. We can easily correct for that. Double click on a peak label to open the Plot Details dialog. In the Label tab, select Auto Reposition to avoid overlapping. Show Leader Line if offset exceeds. We'll set that value to 0. And we'll select Polyline Vert for our Connect style. Let's do this for both of our tag plots. We can click the OK button. We can now reposition our labels. To select an individual label, hold down the Control key on the keyboard and single click in the label. Click again in the label, holding down the mouse button, and drag it to a new position. We can continue moving as many labels as we think is necessary. Let's close this graph. Now let's take a look at using the Quick Peaks gadget with multi-layer graphs. We'll open the gadget. 
in the Gadgets menu, select Quick Peaks, and we'll click on our theme name directly. The gadget with our theme settings has loaded into the first layer of the graph. To tag the peaks for all four layers in the graph, go to the Gadget Flyout menu and select New Output for All Layers. We can see that the peaks in all four layers have been tagged. We can go ahead and close the gadget. Let's go to the Project Explorer and reopen our result workbook. We can see the data for the peaks from all four layers. Let's close the workbook and close the graph. Now let's look at some of the advanced features of the Quick Peak Gadget. We go to the Gadgets menu, open the gadget with the default settings, and click the OK button. Let's try to improve the default baseline. Open the Gadget Preferences, and from the Baseline tab, we'll keep our mode as second derivative, but we'll change the range to full plot range. For our smoothing method, we'll select Savitsky Golay, Set our window size to 6 and our maximum anchor points to 16. When we click the Apply button, we see that the baseline has been improved. There is a new feature in Origin 2015 that allows us to temporarily hide the ROI box in Gadget Controls. If we click on the small button in the upper right corner of the graph window labeled H, we will see that the ROI box and Gadget Controls will be hidden while the gadget output remains visible on the graph. We can click the button again if we wish to show the gadget controls. The gadget also allows us to fit our peaks, switch to the more powerful peak analyzer, and subtract our baseline. We can also select individual peaks. We'll adjust the ROI box, Click New Output. From the Flyout menu, we can open our Report Worksheet. And we can see the peak has been listed in the sheet. Let's drag the ROI box to another peak and click New Output. We can see that peak has been included in the sheet. Finally, we can close our gadget. This concludes our demonstration of the Quick Peaks gadget in Origin 2015. Thank you for watching.